Hey, welcome to Life in the Leadership Lane. I'm your host, Bruce Waller, where I get to talk to leaders that are making a difference in the workplace and in our community. What did they do to get started and what are they doing to stay there? And today I'm getting to talk to another special guest as we celebrate the HR Southwest Conference Speaker Spotlight. Today, I'm going to talk to Al Como. He's the founder and CEO of Prime for Change. He's a best-selling author, one of the top five books on leadership and change, and he's also coming to Fort Worth for the 2022 HR Southwest Conference. Al, hey, I'm ha- glad to have you on the show. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing absolutely fantastic. I'm excited to have you on the show. We're, we're spotlighting HR Southwest Conference speakers. The HR Southwest Conference is coming October the 16th through the 19th of 2022. And hey, have you ever spoke at HR Southwest Conference before? I'm you super know, excited I, you're coming. I haven't. I've obviously worked with HR professionals my whole life, but uh, no, haven't spoken at the conference before. Live in Fort Worth, actually. So it's uh, quite, I'll be able to go to, um, to as much of it as possible and take in as much as I can. And I'm looking forward to that too. You're not even going to have to get on a flight, man. That is fantastic. Just walk across the street to the convention center. Of course, the HR Southwest Conference is powered by Dallas HR. It's one of the largest regional uh, education and networking events by HR professionals who supply products and services to the industry. And today I want to talk a little bit about your session coming up at the conference. And before we get to that, I would love to know the Alcomo story. Like, where did you grow up? You mentioned Fort Worth. You lived there. Uh, and, and how in the world did you get into speaking and, and change management? Well, it's a long story, um, but uh, I'll, I'll try to abbreviate it. I grew up in Louisiana. My last name with an E-A-U-X at the end is, is kind of a giveaway. Um, grew up in Louisiana. I, I found myself uh, while at LSU interested in, um, in, in communications and how, uh, how um how things uh, might not be so simple as simply uh, writing something or doing something. I love to write and, and became a writer, but, um, but I also found that as I got into corporate life, long story short, I found myself at large companies, American Airlines, GE, but also smaller companies, uh, uh, a small startup back in the day called Travelocity mm. um, and, and its parent company, Sabre. Uh, what I kept on finding in these roles in, in the communication space for 20 years as chief communications officer of large divisions or at the top of companies is that change is not something that you can communicate with the, uh, with the written and spoken word. It's important that you, we communicate during a change uh, the, the traditional way, but 90% of communications, as I learned, is action. It, it, it's not uh, the, the, the spoken type of communication. So w- what I started to understand as I was asked by CEOs time and again to help them with the change by writing something about it, and that that would sort of solve the problem, as I started to understand this, and as I started to lose at change, I, I, I lost at change. I'm not somebody who's always been perfect. Uh, my, the changes I tried to lead failed. I started to understand why, I tried to understand why is it that my changes failed, the changes that I was helping to lead, that I was on a team helping to lead, why did they fail? Mm. Uh, And ultimately, as the first thing I found, I went on a 20 year journey to try and understand this, but what took me 20 years was trying to understand something bigger. It turns out that two thirds of change efforts fail. I mean, Mm. this is the thing that we as leaders are probably the worst in the world at. And so as I climbed the corporate ladder and kept on working on different things, I knew that I needed to serve the organizations I worked for. I needed to serve them better if I was going to, if I was going to be worth my weight. And so um, I needed to understand what it was that, uh, that got people to, um, to, to actually succeed at change and what it was that differentiated those from those who failed at change. And so my beginnings was just sort of the, the fact that I was in communications got me to realize that I wasn't going to be successful unless I was able to teach other people in my organization that communications is 90% action, 10% words. And so I knew that, uh, I, I, I knew that I needed to do that in my own world. 
ultimately, I felt like once I sort of got out of corporate life, I realized that I needed, I had the opportunity to share this with all my findings over 20 years uh, and the leadership that I did over the course of that time through a, a hostile takeover, leverage buyout, take private, uh, uh, three CEO transitions, an IPO, two startups inside large organizations, plus thousands, of, not thousands, but probably scores or hundreds of small changes that took place that I helped lead um, regularly um, throughout the, the 20 years that I was uh, in a leadership position. So I had this body of knowledge that I could share and help others perhaps get over the hump and win a change. Uh, and that excited me. So that's how I, I wrote a book. Uh, instead of calling it change management, I called it change the management, why we as leaders must change for the change to last. And that got me into speaking uh, and teaching and, and writing. So um, uh, that's sort of how it happened. So you mentioned, know, is that a I love that. story? <laughs> I love that. Listen, uh, I, I guarantee you right now, there are listeners that are taking notes. I mean, you talk about 90% of communication is action. I love that. And by the way, uh, your book, Change the Management. I love that. I will put the link in the show notes so people will be able to, to, uh, to check that out. So good. Two thirds of change uh, fails. Oh my gosh, that is so good. Well, let's talk about the HR Southwest Conference. As I mentioned, it's going to be in Fort Worth, Texas, October the 16th through the 19th. I'll put a link in the show notes so you can get registered for that. Of course, learn, network, and grow is the theme of the conference. I just absolutely love that. And of course, you're going to be speaking about thinking differently to win at change. Now, that caught my attention because uh, I know a lot of people uh, talk about, well, a lot of leaders I've heard talk about the importance of thinking. And I, I want to talk about that, but I would love to hear what, what is that all about? Thinking differently to win at change. What that, what's that session going to be all about? So um, when we talk about thinking, the, it, it, it's not just how we think. It's not just what we think. It's how we think. And what I talk a lot about is mindset. Mm. Um, mm. the difference between those who won at change and those who lost at change. So back up a little bit, as I studied scores of companies that were going through change to try and understand what was the differentiator, um, they were all focused. And so were the academics, observers, consultants who wrote on this, because I read thousands and thousands of pages. They were all focused on two things for the most part. They were focused on strategy and execution. And so what they were focused on was the fact that we need to know where we're going so that um, we change in the right way and we can see ahead of ourselves so that we can be ready with the change that is needed for what's going to happen two years from now. So we need to have good strategy and, and you can't debate that. And you have to have good execution, smart goals, a sense of urgency, uh, a strong core team to help you with the change, um, great communications and great um, uh, project management. These things are criti critically important to any change. And as I looked at those companies that that won at change, that succeeded at change, they had great strategy and execution. So it made perfect sense to me until I looked at those companies, most of the companies I studied, which failed at change. They had good strategy and execution too. They weren't any different, really. I couldn't find a difference in their capabilities and their, their use of strategy and execution. So I went digging further to try and understand inside those companies that, that, that won at change, what was different from those who lost at change. And ultimately, I, I was able to come to understand that it was, uh, it was uh, mindset. It was how the leaders at these organizations that won at change, how they thought about uh, their, this one thing that, that matters a whole lot uh, during a change. Uh, it's called our people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, it, 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 you know, people say we've got to change our organization. Let me tell you, organizations do not change. Mm. Pe people do. Mm. Um, and so if we're trying to change our organization, it's really about changing people. And change is a decision. Change is not something that we can edict, that we can do by fiat. No, change is a decision. And so when I, as I came to understand that this was how 
these leaders at, this, at these companies that want to change thought, their mindset, how they thought about change, they think differently than those who lose at change. And so I started to understand that there was much, something much greater involved than strategy and execution, which if you look at the literature, if you talk to a lot of people, they'll mostly focus on that. Uh, and I think uh, it'll be um, welcoming for HR leaders to hear uh, my message that no, it's, it's really about people and about our actions as leaders leading a change. Uh, and I tell some great stories about these things uh, in, in, when I talk. I got to tell you, I, uh, I I love to talk about change. I love to be part of those conversations. <laughs> but when it comes time to change and it affects me, I find it very difficult. I find it very difficult. And what you're saying is, is that as a leader, if you think differently, if you can create the right mindset, it will make change easier for the entire organization, Correct. Yeah, easier or more likely to be successful. Change mm. is difficult, yeah. but change is a decision. If our mindset is about, we need to get our people to change. Yeah. No, uh, it, our mindset needs to be about getting our people to want to change, to decide to change. That's the great difference between those mm. who want to change and those who lost to change. They understood it was a decision. They understood they didn't necessarily have control over it that they had to do some things that were maybe a little scarier than just sort of being the boss. They had to lead their people to the place where they wanted to go. And they had to do it through their own actions because again, communications is 90% action and 10% words. Mm. The very best communicators in the world, by the way, people who have made their careers being writers and, and, and good at the written and spoken word speech writers um, uh, corporate communications professionals, the very best, the members of the Arthur Page Society, there's, they have done a lot of research to show that communications is 90% action, 10% words. Uh, if our actions are out of line with what we're saying, game over. So you talked about that earlier, and I wanted to follow up on that because it's, it's very, very true. Yeah, I, lo I love that. And, and I love what you said. Uh, you know, organizations don't change, people do. You know, as you think, if you talk about that, I think about John Maxwell once sharing that. Uh, he said, whenever it's um, on someone else, it's minor surgery. But when it's on you, <laughs> it becomes major surgery. I just, I, and absolutely. And as, you, and as you talk about that, I just think, you know, it, this is really, I love the topic. I think it's a difficult topic, but I think with the right tools and resources and mindset, it could be a topic that you could really move, move a lot of things with. T talk about a couple of, I don't know, you don't have to share everything, but maybe a couple of tips that you might be talking about that's going to help some, someone, uh, some of the attendees in the session, it, it, it might help them take back and, and apply in the workplace. Any thoughts around that? Yeah, sure. So um, I talk about uh, the need for us to uh, focus on inputs before outcomes. Mm. When it's time to change, we run into the change and say, here's what the outcome needs to be. And let's, let's, um, let's get there. Come on, let's get there. Uh, what we really <laughs> need to do is understand where we're going. We do need to know what outcomes we want. But there are inputs. What are the inputs that we need to give in order to, in order to, um, as leaders, in order to affect the organization, affect the organization in a way that gets people to understand that this is real. It's not just that we have all these communications all over the place. It's real. How do we bring it home? And I tell a story uh, about a company that, that, that did that in such a special way. Um, I talk about um, pulling our people to the change as opposed mm. to pushing the change on to people. I sort of, there hasn't been much said about push, pull. Uh, there, there's there's a, a three or four people I found out on the internet who've talked about it. When I came to realize that it really is about pulling our people to the change and what that looks like. I tell a story about, well, an era that a lot of us know about. Some of us, it was before our time, but it was the, the dawn of the, uh, of the internet and e-commerce and how different companies reacted different ways and who won and why they won. I went back and studied those companies that won to find out where they were and what their mindset was. 
back in the day when they were getting started and how they came to, to survive, not only survive, but thrive and become giant. Mm. I talk about the importance of listening. Mm. Listening is, uh, listening is important for a couple of reasons. The, the, the first one is that as leaders, we have to humble ourselves and realize that we don't know anything. I mean, we probably know some things, but we don't mm. know everything. And in fact, our people, our people know much better than we do. We can't possibly know, no matter how long we've been in our organization, we can't possibly know all of the, all of the, uh, the, the baton handoffs that have to take place every day. The, 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 the frictions that have been worked out between people, departments, divisions, we can't possibly know all of that. But, and so when we go to our people with everything figured out in terms of what the change is going to be, they look at us like we're naive. Now, they'll be polite and they'll just do what we tell them to do because, well, it's kind of an edict. Um, but we're missing out on two things. One, we're missing out on a better solution set because if we go to our people and we listen and ask them for the solution set, we get a much better solution set. But the other thing that we're missing <clears throat> is that we're missing out on a real opportunity for our own selves to learn our mm. business and how mm. it actually works. Because we have theory sitting up in the ivory tower. This is an opportunity for us to really understand how it works and to get motivated again and get excited mm. again about how it works. So uh, there are a number of other reasons. Obviously, when people feel heard, they will do remarkable things. And I tell a story about that, uh, just how surprising it can be what people will come forth and do when they feel heard, when they feel a part of, this, uh, of the solution. So those are some of the things that I talk about uh, in my speech. And I'm not going to get into the stories because I'm well, giving away everything. But, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but that's what I, those are the things that I sort of focus on. Well, sp speaking of listening, those that are listening, I know, uh, uh, have heard some really good stuff and are thinking right now, I've got to get registered for that conference. Uh, again, uh, hrsouthwest.org. I'll put the link in the show notes and you'll definitely want to attend Al's session. You know, you mentioned something around uh, pulling versus pushing, and I thought that was interesting. Uh, but are you talking about you're just going to go grab somebody by the hand, by the arm, say, come on, let's go. Uh, no, it's or metaphorical. <laughs> right? It's metaphorical. What we try to do, though, is push change onto people is sort yeah. of by edict, by uh, fiat, you know, saying, you know, here's the change. Here's we've decided what the change is. Um, here's why we need it. And uh, let's go do it. Um, and that's often what I found at those companies that lost a change. They they came up with their Internet strategy or whatever it yeah. was. And they were so proud of it and they figured the, they had everything sort of figured out and, and, and they knew how they were going to get there. And then they told their people that. And there's a reason why we do this, by the way. There's a reason why we push change onto people, um, why we come up with the change and then decide uh, what it's going to be and, and sort of go forth to everyone. And it's a very good reason. I talk about it in my speech. Um, we're good at something. Mm -hmm. We're very good at something. We're good at solving problems. Mm. As we're young in our careers, we grow up uh, learning to, that, that, that if we can solve problems, we get pats on the back, we get promoted. And so by the time we're at the top of an organization, whether it's a division or maybe a, a, just a, a leadership team um, somewhere, we're surrounded by the people who solve problems. We're so problem solvers. And so we try to solve the problem, then we hand it down to everyone. When that happens, they push back. Mm. I talk about some of the science behind this, but when that happens, they push back. Instead, when we do these other things, pulling our people to the change, listening, modeling, uh, those are things that get people to come with us. And so um, that's what pulling is. It's not necessarily grabbing something. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I actually was looking for the, the, the uh, metaphor uh, for this. I, I, I was kind of looking for a metaphor. didn't know if I'd come up with one while I was writing my book. And then one day I was, I, was, I was looking at Twitter and someone was celebrating the 20, 1920 London Olympics. It had been 99 years since the 1928 London Olympics. Did you know that, that um, uh, uh, rope, um, um, what do you call it, um, where people pull rope against each other? Yeah, like tug other? of war. Uh, tug of war. Tug yes. of war was, tug of war was a, an Olympic sport at one point. Um, so your country put a whole team together for tug of war. It actually would be fun to, fun to see, but um, <laughs> that was one of the videos or uh, old film that they had. And that got me to, somehow that got me to connect that pulling 
was what I was trying to talk about. Mm. It was really about pulling. So that's the funny way that I got to it. But it's a very, I, I think, a very um, consequential thing uh, to be to, to focus on on pulling. Okay, so I need. I think you need to bring a rope to your session. <laughs> Get one half of the room on one side of the rope, one half of the room on the other. Would that be fantastic? Or what? Yeah. Oh my so, goodness, that's going to be well, exciting. Well, think, think think about you. You show up at a at a. Um, this is not something I talk about in my speech. So, but you show up at a at a scene where your boss is all by herself. Yeah. Being pulled, she's pulling on a rope. There are five people from your competitor. Yeah. Who are pulling on the other side. What are you going to do? Are you going to, uh, are you going to wait to be told what to do? No, you're going to yeah. run up and try and help this leader. You're going to call other people. This was your idea. Yeah. Right. This was your idea to come and help, to come and work, work with the, the leader. So yes, it's a tug of war and it's pulling, but it could be that your boss has five people throwing things at her and you want to, you're going to want to run up and help and try to help the person uh, that is on your side. So that's, that's, um, that means that you're, you're, you're naturally pulled to it. You're naturally sort of want to go there. Um, and you decide to go there. And that's one of the things about pulling. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. I, I know this is going to be a great session. Uh, I cannot wait. I, I'm, I guarantee your room is going to be full. Hey, last thing I want to just mention here is you talked about listening and, uh, whenever I talk about trust building, developing influence in the workplace, uh, every high performing leader talks about listening, the importance of listening. And so it sounds like that's part of the, uh, the process for change the management as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's so critical. And that's not just during a change. It really is a mindset that we need to have that we have some idea but if we could just go and listen and try and understand things better, mm. not only will we understand our business better and, and how things might work in a new world, we might understand those things better, but we also have people who are just eager to help as opposed to sort of pushing back. I mean, that's a giant leverage point. Yeah, this is going to be great. Again, Al Como is going to be speaking uh, the session is going to be thinking differently to win at change. I'm so excited uh, about this. And so definitely get registered and, and be part of that session. Hey, I want to ask you before we shift to uh, the last part of the segment, and it's time to accelerate. I want to ask you, I always like to ask my guests if they've ever been given any advice just during some time during their life, right? Maybe earlier in the career, maybe in Louisiana, or maybe during all of your relocations around the around the globe. Any advice you ever received that it was just so good, you just find yourself sharing with others? Uh, dig deep, mm. dig deep. As a professional, whether we're in HR or legal or communications or one of the functions, that's not necessarily right inside the thing that we build or create. It's important for us to really understand what's going on there. How does this... Um, how do we actually manufacture these things? How do, how does, how does, um, you know, I had to learn about um, turbines and, and uh, all these different sorts of things when I was at GE, because I really needed to understand these things so I could be a part of things and be uh, a, a trusted member of, uh, of leadership. So that, that to me is, I think, a critical, especially for those of us in these functions, um, so that I, I think uh, it, it's been important to me. It means that sometimes you spend five hours on Saturdays just trying to learn as you're getting up to speed on things. But it's really important to go deep. Dig deep. I love that. Write that down, folks. Uh, learn, And that goes along with learning the business, understanding the business. So that way, when things do happen, you can see that big picture uh, as well. Man, this has been so good. I appreciate you. Uh, sharing all this. I, again, I cannot wait to uh, to attend your session, Thinking Differently to Win at Change. Hey, we're going to shift over to It's Time to Accelerate for the last few minutes of the show. And I like to ask a fun few questions. The first question I want to ask, I mean, you've been at a lot of cities. What is your favorite city to visit? Do you have a favorite? Cape, Cape Town, South Africa. When I get asked that question, I don't even hesitate. Fantastic place. I was there in 97. 
so I was still pretty young and, and, and price was pretty important to me. Things are still very inexpensive there. I remember going to, lunch, to breakfast and eating and eating and eating, and it was $1.20. <laughs> um, and you just laugh, right? We went to the most expensive restaurant in this one town and asked for the most expensive bottle of wine, and it was $9. So uh, that was great, but but it, it the, the wine country puts California to shame. The whales, I was there in October, the whales everywhere. It's a beautiful city on a beautiful setting. It's just, uh, if you get a chance to go to Cape Town, South Africa, I, I highly recommend it. I love that. I've never been. That sounds like a really, really uh, cool place to go. You know, you mentioned you was from Louisiana, and I just came back from National Sherm, and it was the first time I had been to New Orleans. And really? I explored the city all week. It was fantastic. I just, I absolutely loved it. I loved it. New Orleans is a great, great city. We used to, well, when I was at LSU, we, yeah. um, you know, Thursday afternoon, if you had no classes on Friday, suddenly you're <laughs> in a car on your way to New Orleans. Well, let, let me, uh, let me ask you this. What are you most looking forward to this year at the HR Southwest Conference? Well, I'm excited that it's in Fort Worth so that, I mean, I think it's always in Fort Worth, but, it, but right. it's in Fort Worth and that means that I can go every day and listen. I'm, I'm looking forward to listening and learning as much as I can. A sharing, of course, but listening and learning and, and understanding what's, what's on the minds uh, today uh, of the HR partners I used to have uh, when I was actually in, in corporate life. Yeah, that's fantastic. Hey, let me ask you this. Outside of talking about your book and speaking to different groups and, and work, what energizes you? Well, I, I love to travel. Um, I, uh, you know, I've been to I don't know, 45 countries, something like that. I stopped wow. counting um, at some point, but, but you go all over the place and you, you see things and it, it, it um, brings you to... Um, to a new place and, and it, it enriches you, I think. Mm. Um, so I, I love to do that. We don't get to, for a long time, we didn't get to do it as much as we'd like because we had young kids. Now our kids are teenagers and, and they're gung-ho to, to go as well. So, um, so travel, yeah, travel is my, my uh, go-to. You know, every time, every time I go to a new city, I, I, I think when you talked about enriches you, I, I find myself just in deep reflection and thinking, you know, when you're out looking over at a bay or at a city or something different, it is just absolutely incredible. Love that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Al, uh, the last question I have for you, uh, one of my favorite questions I like to ask my guests on the show is Al, 10 years older, is around the corner knocking at your door. And you're going to go answer that door. What's he going to tell you? Just be sure to, to enjoy what you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Enjoy helping people. Um, help as many people as you can. Uh, be generous. And things will, things will work out for you. Uh, things will happen. And, and I think generosity is, is something that's sort of overlooked sometimes uh, in business. Sometimes. Um, but uh, it, it comes back to it comes back to haunt you in the right way. So be generous. I think I would tell myself 10 years from now. Uh, I think I'm decently generous today, but I think I would want to make sure that I stay focused on that. That's a wise 10 year older Al Como. I love that. Great leaders are grateful leaders. That's for sure. Al Como, he's the uh, best selling author of Change the Management. Why we as leaders must change for the change to last. And that book, I'm sure, is going to be available at the bookstore. Uh, again, I'll put the link on the website if you want to check that out ahead of time. Be sure and check out Al's session at the, uh, the conference. It's coming up October the 16th through the 19th. And I'm super excited. Shirley Johnson, she's the uh, conference director this year. She's going to do a fantastic job. Of course, Tom Barton will be part of that as the elect. Uh, you know, the whole Dallas HR staff uh, powers that conference. And of course, it's the official conference of Texas Sherm. And so it's going to be a great, great week. If you have an opportunity, uh, get registered. I'm going to put the link in the show notes. And when you do register, be sure and attend Al's session. Al, I appreciate you coming on the show today. Just sharing your wisdom and perspective. Uh, I, I got a lot out of it. I took a lot of notes here and I know the listeners uh, have to. If someone wants to follow you uh, or connect with you ahead of time, what, what's the best way for them to connect? Uh, so uh, the website is alcomo.com, and that's kind of hard to spell. So the easier way is uh, my company's name, primedforchange.com. 
that'll get you to the same place. Primeforchange.com. I'll put that link in the show notes as well. And uh, yeah, and, and again, I appreciate you coming on the show. And, and uh, man, I cannot wait to share this episode and see you in Fort Worth. Can't wait to see you as well, Bruce. Awesome. Hey, I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.